guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're returning, if you're new, welcome. My name is Nikki with Simply Home by Nikki. Today I'm gonna to do a kind of a different video. I was organizing and cleaning my basement, which is where my craft room is. And I, I shouldn't say I came across it because I knew it was there, but I pulled out my grandma's sewing box. So it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but it is this huge amber coloring, colored kind of clear box. I have not opened this since my mom gave it to me about 10 years ago. So I'm gonna open it up. There's three levels to it and we're just gonna see what's inside of it. And then I'm hoping to use some of the stuff that's inside of it, add my sewing supplies into it and have it be usable. And I thought it would be a great memory of my grandma when I use it. So I'm gonna move this off to the side and I'm just going to take out the top layer. The, even this noise brings back memories like that just reminds me of my grandma. Okay. So this is the top layer. Right off the bat, I can see some really fun thread colors. Look at those vibrant colors. Lots of oranges, red. These were from I thought I just saw a price, five for a dollar. So thread used to be 25 cents. Why do we pay now? I just bought gold thread, it was like 350. These small ones were 19 cents each and these are the old wooden spools. So when this thread is gone, I'll definitely be saving those. These are plastic, so these are a little bit newer. There's 35 yards on the small ones. I don't see a price though on those. Um, we'll get all the thread out. Another pretty blue color, green. Really weird that there's just all colored thread in here and a lot of orange. Must have been the 70s when orange was popular. Red, a brown, definitely 70s colors. Navy blue. Ooh, Shopko was having a sale seven for a dollar. I don't know if you guys had Shopko's in your area. Um, or if it was just the Wisconsin thing, but they recently all just closed down within like the last year. So this was seven for a dollar. The recommended price was five for a dollar. So that is beautiful lime green color. Okay, then we have some seam binding in a pretty yellow color. I'll definitely be saving that. I'll use that um, in my junk journals. Here is some brown embroidery thread. Embroidery thread was also 19 cents each. So I think these go for almost a dollar today, if not a little bit more. So that's kind of a, I don't even like a bronzy brown color. So I'll definitely use that. Um, a little metal and it is, I, oh, St. Francis of Assisi. I see that very hard for me to read that um, a needle book this is what needles came like back then a lot of um, companies would give these away and advertise on them I know that I have some of those um, that I've been collecting for my junk journals uh, this looks like a needle threader and a really large needle with a large eye on it that'll come in handy I'll definitely use that and this box is from Fox River Tractor Company in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm sure she just repurposed that. There is two thimbles. One looks a little more worn than the other. Definitely keep those. Some elastic. This is a tracing wheel and this was used when you put your pattern on top of your fabric you would run this along the line instead of cutting the pattern out with it and then this would give you your perforated lines to cut on your fabric so I think that's what that was for this looks like it was maybe a foot or an attachment for a sewing machine that I no longer have so that's just garbage to me a lot of miscellaneous pins stick pins and um fastening pins, some more needles, not sure what these are, these must be some kind of, some kind of fasteners that are attached to a, a metal 
pin type thing too. I'm not sure what those are. Let me know, comment if you know what those are. Oh, an original tomato pin cushion. I love this, I'll definitely use this. Very cool. Um, really pretty sage green color thread. Put that over there. Um, looks like just a little tiny toolkit. I bet that she used that to probably tighten or do things to her sewing machine. I don't have a use for that. Oh, we have another thread here, a brown. Definitely 70s colors with the greens, the oranges, the browns. Um, a tape measure. I'll definitely hang on to this to use. And a sewing gauge. I don't know if that's something you would attach to the foot of your sewing machine. Comment if you know what that is or how you would use that. Um, this obviously slides and it's a Dritz sewing gauge. I'm not really, I'm not familiar with what that is. Um, and then another little uh, screwdriver, probably hang on to that. All right, so that is the first layer. I'll probably um, clean this out really good before I bring it back to put everything back in. Okay, the second layer. Oh, I wanted to go through this. So, let me put this back just a second. So the first layer is um, made up of holders for your thread. There are one, two, three, five for your, your large threads. So obviously they would go like this. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 for the smaller threads. And those would sit on there like that. And then there's just various compartments. Um, most of them are flat. Oh, they're actually labeled. Let's read what they say. So this one is for buttons, pins and needles. And this one has a, it's conquer, concaved at the bottom so you can easily pick them out. Um, bobbins and bobbins in those two. Tape measure and ruler. Your scissors, oh, that's clever. See how it's cut in the shape of the scissors. This is for your pin cushion. Perfect. And this one is for your thimbles. Oh, I love that, that it is labeled like that. Okay. Now we'll take out the second row. Okay, so the second row has a lot more thread. This is a navy blue, a green, and a red. Another navy. There's some random pins or needles attached to those. A pretty sky blue. Different color blues there. Navy and more of a royal. Some golden colors. Here's another um, one of the embroidery flosses. It looks to be the same color. It's a gold brown it's labeled. See that there. Um, another tape measure. We'll hang on to that. I'll uh, get all the thread out of here first. So white that's almost gone. Red, green, and brown. So we have sewing machine oil here. Ah, uh, this, what is this? Used blades, this holds, I believe these are um, like for an X-Acto knife, like X-Acto blades. I don't know how you open it though. It's got, you put your used blades in there and you can see that there's blades in there that are in there. But I'm not sure how you would get new ones in there. Comment if you know. Interesting. Here's a little felt case. Let's see what's in there. Oh, it is a Merry Christmas metal. I have no idea what that is. Can't get it out. Santa. Oh, yeah, I can't get it out. Interesting. Okay, 
here are some little white pins. I was just reading what it said. Eliminate sewing. Push pin through material to back wire, then close. Pin lies flat. Interesting. Okay, those were 30 cents. Many sewing needles in here. have a shortage of needles and that's kind of funny since I really just bought some. Pre-war quality. Okay so they must have reduced the quality during the war to save on metal and then they went back. Very cool. Um, well here is one of the razors. Oh see it is a razor. Interesting. With a little tiny blade or a little blade holder. So this looks like what was in, oops, in here. So this is how you used it. And then you put the used one in there. Interesting. Uh, here's a sewing machine needle pack. There's only one left. I'm not sure if uh, machines are universal or not. Uh, if that'd be something worth keeping. I, I have a brother sewing machine, just a real cheap one. And it does say brother on there. So interesting, I'll see if it fits. Here is just a little um, cardboard ruler. And it is Catholic University of Peking in Chicago. Uh, and then just a few, just a random pen, a uh, plastic piece that looks, oh. Okay, so this one is interesting. This one has grooves. Oh, does that go in there? Yeah, it must fit in there somehow. Those go in and out. in there. There's only three separators and this one isn't labeled. Oh, here's another separator. Yeah, you can use those. That's very cool. Those go in there pretty tight. All right. Um, now the bottom is just a big open. Let's see. I'll just pull things out, but it's just a big open drawer container. Okay. So I'll pull a couple things out at a time. Okay, so this was a pom-pom maker was in here. It's empty now. It says you can make five different size yarn pom-poms. I'll see if there's something in there loose, but yeah, this is empty. There's, those were the instructions for it. Um, quite a few different needles, uh, quilting needles, A carpet sharp, a glover, chenille, sharp point needle with large eye for cruel candle wicking embroidery, tapestry needle, tufting needle, and two curved needles for sewing upholstery and mattresses and lampshades. Very interesting. These, this is another set of assorted, some really big ones in there as well, with the list of what they are. Uh, this is my mom's writing, so she must have used this. It says sugar and cream yarn. Oh, and this is the directions for a blue dishcloth. I don't crochet, so I'm sure that that makes sense to somebody out there. And a variegated dishcloth. Oh, more, <laughs> more needles. Oh my goodness, I will never need a needle again. Some snaps. Look how big some of those are. Um, oh, yep. JP and Coates, these were sold at the Ben Franklin for $2.10. Iron on knit. This looked like oh, patches. Yep, yeah, these were patches you could use. Five pieces for 39 cents. All right, we just have some white labels here. File folder labels, some appliques, kind of cool. Ooh, an old embroidery ring, metal, with a spring load. That's interesting. Here is some beautiful Christmas yarn, or ribbon, gold and blue and green and red. 
that was on clearance for 99 cents. Looks like it wasn't open. Again, some more heavy duty needles. Um, some more needles. What are these? Iron-on fabric, mending sheets, pillowcases, shirts, and tablecloths in a multi-assortment of colors. Material for patching. Oh, some huge snaps, three of them on there. Oh, some interesting button hooks right there. That's neat. Yep, three of them, one is missing part of it. Some elastic in black. A hook and eye closure. So a lot of this she must have bought just to have on hand in case something would break. She had it on hand to mend. American Thread Company Mending Wool, Wool Knitting Yarn. Hmm. Assuming since it's for, um, it says sewing, crochet, embroidery, and darning. Maybe you use that with, for socks, since it's a, a thicker wool. Um, here's some buttons, pretty yellow color. Some white buttons. A black zipper. Oh, two black zippers. Nine inches. A very large knitting needle. I don't knit either. Okay. Um, some black wooden beads. Some more of that embroidery floss. I'm, I wonder what she was doing with this color, what she was doing with that. Um, empty plastic bag, some tiny buttons, some googly eyes. Oh, this is part of that pom-pom creator. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside and we'll see if we can take a look at that. Okay. Oh my gosh, look at this huge container of safety pins. They are so heavy and thick. I wish that you guys could feel these. Like, they are nothing like how they make them today. That baby is going to stay in place. Oh, this is a great find. I love these. You could put beads on those. Look how big those are. That would be cute on a charm, wouldn't it? Put some wooden beads on there. One dollar for all of those. Here is the other pom-pom maker, so we'll definitely take a look at those. Uh, more snaps, more elastic. Boy, I was looking for elastic to make masks when the pandemic first started and I couldn't find it anywhere and here it was sitting in my house. I could have made a ton of them. Uh, this looks like an empty needle container. Two very pink, pretty pink buttons. Um, this is just a extra piece of fabric. Um, more knitting needles. This is the match to that one. And here are these. These would be really neat on display. I'll have to find a way to um, incorporate those into my craft area. I'd like to have those out. Um, another machine needle. Hook and eyes. More needles. A nice wooden ruler from Ben Franklin Crafts. More elastic, kind of a thicker one. Um, some more iron-on fabric for patching. Mending sheets, pillowcases, shirts, and tablecloths again. What's that? I'm not sure what this is. Some kind of a metal piece. This is also elastic, real thin pieces. This would be perfect for um, 
your traveler's notebook, making a traveler's notebook. That's great elastic for that. More googly eyes. More darning noodle, noodles, needles. <laughs> um, another one of these. Getting to the end here. More elastic. Oh my gosh, I seriously would have had enough to do anything I needed without this elastic. Hook and eyes again. Um, another one of these. Snaps. And these are the last things. So just hook and eyes. A random needle. And this. I believe that this is an electric scissors. I remember this as a child that my grandma used this. I'll take it out. Okay, it is that brand name. The cover. Oh, sure. It's got a light on it. This is how you turn it on. I wonder how sharp it is. I'll have to try it out. So that is it. That's everything that was in grandma's sewing bin. Like I said, I'm going to wash out the insides. I'm going to choose out of this stuff, the stuff that I want to keep. Um, I may keep some of it just in a container someplace else and not store it in this bin. Um, but I will be back to show you the final results. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, it took me maybe about a half hour to get that all sorted out. Um, I put things back in the container that I plan on using. I set some things aside that I plan on saving, but I'm not going to use. And then some was actually junk, so I threw it away. So again, I'll bring this over here. Um, I'll go ahead and take out each roll. So here is the first one. I actually didn't have a scissors that fit this. They must not make scissors in the same shape that they used to, but I do have a pinking shears and that does fit. So I put that in there. Um, the pin cushion I put in, it's got some of the vintage pins in it, a T pin and then some newer pins. And then the overflow of pins I put in here. So this is the ribbon or the thread. Sorry, I wasn't able to fit all the thread in. So I did put some on the second level. Uh, the tape measures, I have a seam ripper, a ruler, and this little contraption, just in case it's something I need. All my bobbins are here. There is a needle threader, um, a couple pins and some buttons here. So that, oh, I'm sorry, the two thimbles here and some extra bobbins. So that is the first roll. The second row has extra thread. I have just some dollar store thread here in different colors, a larger spool of black here. Um, this is some extra pieces for my sewing machine. I have a screwdriver, some extra feet, um, a, a lengthened bobbin holder. I have some sewing in a tube. It's just a glue stitch. It works pretty well. I use it um, not very often, but I like to have it on hand. In here, I have things for um, scoring. That's what this is, a scoring tool. I figured it out. And then I have some crochet hooks that were my mom's, and I wanted to just keep those in there. Um, here are extra sewing machine needles those in there. These are needles that I just bought. These were from Walmart. They're super cheap. Um, honestly, I don't even know if I'll be using these, but I threw them in there. These are the ones that were in it. Um, I did cut some of the packaging apart so I could just keep them in here. Um, there are some loose ones in the bottom as well. So these are extra needles. The bottom part, um, I think is for storing little pieces of fabric or fabric scraps. So I didn't keep too much in there. Um, I ended up putting the elastic in a baggie 
So here's some elastic. There was one elastic that I threw away. Um, once I started unraveling it, it seemed like it was um, really fragile. So I didn't think there was a, a reason to keep that. So I have this in here. I have the larger needles. I have the darning thread just because I think it's really cool. I wanted to just keep it. I love the vintage look of it. So that's in there. Um, my safety pins, which are really pretty cheap. My grandma's safety pins, which are super heavy duty. A set of snaps, just in case I would ever need them. And a zipper. And that's all that I have in the bottom. So everything is fitting really well. Um, definitely have room for more. I'm gonna put some fabric scraps that I have in the bottom. Um, like I said, um, some of the extra threads I'm just going to keep um, in a separate area in storage. Um, I have some things that I'm going to throw away. But as promised, uh, since we found the pom-pom maker, so what they are is just these. These popped out of here. They were in the middle of each one. And then these actually pop out of here. So you can make three different size pom-poms. And all you do is you just put them together. So you're gonna, this groove right here, you're gonna put that groove together and then you're just gonna start weaving your thread through it or your yarn through it. So I took like four strands at a time here and you just keep putting it through, putting it through. And it said for a, oh, let's see. I think it's said for a two inch pom-pom made with four ounce four ply yarn, you'll use approximately 10 yards of yarn. So I guess it just gives you an estimate. Okay, so once you get the whole thing filled and as thick as you want, um, you're going to, just like the pom-pom makers today, you would go ahead and you would cut Cut right there. That's why that groove is there. Your scissors fits right inside of it. So you would cut. And then here it shows while the um, yarn is still inside of it, you would take another piece of yarn around the middle of it. And that's where you would tie it to make your pom-pom. So the ones from today, um, you know, those come apart. So you're, you're e more easy easily able to uh, manipulate the yarn through it. Like here, I had to cut the strands to put it through, but still, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, kind of ahead of, ahead of its time for making tassels, you know, or pom-poms because back in the day, they would just, you know, wrap it around a piece of cardboard or something like that. So here you can make three different sizes. Um, okay, so I also got out the electric scissors and this, <laughs> This works so good. Okay, so I just have a old t-shirt rag here. So how it actually works is it this doesn't move up and down like a scissors. It actually works on vibrations and it cuts cuts through the vibrations. So I held held it apart and my daughter actually worked the scissors and it went so fast. So let me see if I can do it by myself. So you're just going to put it in. Let's see if you were to do it on a table. So that's it's really loud. And it slices right through it. So that is actually pretty cool. Um, it's pretty fast. I don't know. I don't know if you'd be able to like cut out shapes with it. Yeah, I feel like you couldn't do that. I feel like it's just made for long, straight cuts. That wasn't very straight because I wasn't pulling it, but Anyway, I think it's something I'll hang on to. I don't know that I'll use it very often, but I thought it was a really cool tool. So that is it, guys. Um, thank you for watching. Like I said, if you're familiar with any of the items that I wasn't familiar with, I'd love for you to comment below and let me know what they are or how to use them. Um, and again, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, hit the not notification bell to be notified every time I post a video and share this with your friends if you think it's something that they'd be interested in. Thank you guys for uh, taking along with me today. I appreciate it.